In this video, Bill Schlund is going to show you how to back save parts in Creo. Or, to say it another way, how a model created in a newer version can be opened in a previous version of Creo. Because sometimes you just want to go back in time. Man, I wish I could go back in time. I take state. And, probably more realistically, sometimes you need to work with another division or another company that may not have the same version of Creo as you do. All right, let's get into it. Today I'm going to go over a quick tip on how to back save parts and assemblies in Creo. There are still quite a few customers out there that are using older releases of Creo. And there could be a lot of reasons for this. It could be a parent company is holding you back, um, the version of Windchill that you're on. Maybe you have another division that uh, isn't uh, progressing as far as you would want or as quickly as you want. Um, lots of different reasons. But uh, really for you retro users, we're going to answer the question, can a model be saved in one release and opened up in a previous release? First of all, I want to talk a little bit about EAC. We transform the way that companies design, manufacture, connect to, and service their products. And one of the ways we do that is by doing something that we're going through right now. It's a quick little tip to help you in your day-to-day uh, -day activities. So there are really two approaches, two ways of doing this. There's the non-granite approach, and then there's the granite approach. So the non-granite basically is something a lot of people already know, is you can save out a neutral format from Creo, save as dot NEU format. This is a PTC format, but what it does allow you to do is call up parts and assemblies in older releases if you call up this neutral file format. Now you'll notice I said parts and assemblies and not drawings. This only applies to parts and assemblies. The other method is real straightforward as well. It's the GCRI method, GCRI standing for Granite-Based Cross-Release Interoperability. But let's take a look at how you go about doing that. Basically, all you have to do is go to the newer version of Creo, and under Common Files uh, and Machine Type, here I'm dealing with a, a Windows 64-bit uh, machine, but um, there's a GCRI folder. In that folder, we'll find a file called readnewermodels.dll. What we do is we just copy that file into the load point of the older version of Creo that we want to read. So in this case, we again would go under Common Files and under the OBJ directory, copy it there. So we're basically just taking this DLL and copying it from the GCRI of the newer version into the OBJ folder of the older version. All of these are under the common files directory. So let's take a look and see what this would be like. Here I have Creo 5 and I have an assembly up here. I'm just going to say let's take this and save it. And then in Creo 2, I'm going to go over and say let's open up that assembly, Creo 5 assembly. When I say open, it comes back this is under a newer release, it cannot be opened. So what we can do now is use that granite-based approach. I'm going to go to the load point Creo 2 under Common Files and the load point of Creo 5 under the GCRI, and here's that readnewermodels.dll, so I'm copying it from Creo 5 over here into Creo 2. This is the load point. Again, We'll copy it in here, and you notice that this is under Common Files in the OBJ directory. We've copied the file here, and now what we need to do is restart Creo 2, and we should be able to open up the file. I've restarted Creo 2. Now if I say File, open that same Creo 5 assembly, it says this is from Creo 5. It's going to use the Granite approach. Yep. And in comes our assembly. So we haven't had to do any file import or anything like that. Everything comes in exactly the way that it went out, minus the colors. Uh, one of the other things uh, that you will notice is that if we turn on our features, you notice that each one of these components is basically an import feature. So the individual features themselves, the history and all of that, are not here. Uh, neither are simplified reps or cross sections. But again, this is a really quick and easy way so that from now on it doesn't matter where my assemblies or parts are coming from, I'm going to be able to open them up 
I'm going to still be able to create features on here and be able to add draft, be able to make a mold of parts if I need to, or whatever else I might need to do. Um, I'm just not going to have to go in and have to deal with step or edges or anything like that. Hopefully this helps you out. I hope this tip will help you get things done. If you like this video, don't forget to hit subscribe and give us a like. And if you have any questions or comments, drop them in the comments section below. I'll talk to you soon.